let's say if we have cyclohexene. Now what's going to happen if we react it with, let's say, bromine in an inner solvent such as dichloromethane? And in another situation, let's react it with bromine and water. So what are the products of these reactions? Now for the one on above, we simply have the halogenation reaction with an alkene. And this is going to give you two products, anti-addition. That means one of the bromine atoms will be in the front and the other will be in the back. And plus you'll get the enantiomer, where this one is in the back and this one's in the front. The signs are reversed. Now, in the next example, if you add bromine with water, instead of getting two bromine atoms as your product, you're going to have one bromine atom and an OH, anti-addition. Plus, you'll get the enantiomer. For a syn addition reaction, the signs will be the same. You'll either have two groups on the same side. It could be on a dash or on a wedge, but these are anti-addition reactions. But now let's talk about the mechanism. This, by the way, is known as the halo hydrin. Let's go over the first mechanism between the alkene and bromine and dichloromethane. Let's understand how it works. And then we can see how the halo hydrin forms. So the first thing that happens, the double bond attacks one of the bromine atoms, causing the other bromine atom to be expelled. And at the same time, the first bromine atom attacks the double bond. And so you get a product that looks like this. You get this uh, cyclic bromineum ion. Before, bromine has three lone pairs. Now, in this structure, it only has two lone pairs, but it has a positive charge. Now, you still have the other bromide ion in a solution somewhere. And what happens at this point is that it attacks one of the carbon atoms from the back, breaking the other bond. So that pushes the first bromine atom to the front. And because the other one attacked from the back, it's going to be in the back. And so we have anti-addition. Now let's talk about what happens if we put the alkene and mix it with bromine in water. So the first reaction with bromine is going to be the same. we're going to get the cyclic intermediate. But this time is going to be a little different than the last time. This time, water is going to act as a nucleophile. And it's going to attack from the back, expelling the bromine atom. And so that's how we're going to get the halo hydrogen. It's still going to be anti-addition. But there's one more step after this. Whenever oxygen has three bonds, it's, it's going to have a positive formal charge. So we need to use another water molecule to remove one of the hydrogen atoms. And so this one is going to do that. And so now we have our halo hydrogen product. And as you can see, all of these reactions, the stereochemistry is anti addition. We don't get the syn addition product. Now, what happens if we have the halo hydrogen reaction, but with an unsymmetrical alkene? So let's say, like a chlorine and water. 
We know we're going to get a CL and an OH, but which element is going to go where? So this is the primary carbon, and this is the secondary carbon. Water is going to be the nucleophile in this reaction. And the nucleophile is going to go on a more substituted carbon. So we're going to get this product. But now let's write up a mechanism for it. Feel free to try it yourself as well. So we know the first step is going to be the same. The double bond is going to attack the chlorine, expelling the other chlorine. And the first chlorine at the same time will attack the double bond, generating the cyclic chlorineum intermediate, which looks like this. So this chlorine atom is going to have two lone pairs and a positive formal charge. Now, notice that we have a primary carbon and a secondary carbon. It turns out that the water molecule is going to attack the secondary carbon. The question is why? They both bear partial positive charge because they're attached to an electronegative chlorine atom. Even though chlorine has a positive formal charge, it has a negative intrinsic partial charge. Chlorine is still more electronegative than carbon. So partial charge and formal charge are two different things. Now because secondary carbocations are more stable than primary carbocations, it's going to be easier to break the bond between the secondary carbon and the chlorine. So as water approaches, because the secondary carbon is more stable, the secondary carbocation, the transition state that forms as water approaches is going to be more stable. And so this is why water attacks from that side. And it's going to expel the chlorine atom from that uh, secondary carbon. And so we have anti-addition. Water attacks from the back. Cl is pushed out to the front. And that's why we get that anti-addition product. So now you know why the nucleophile attacks preferentially at the more substituted carbon for this particular case. Now the last step in the mechanism is to use the water molecule as a weak base. Bases, they abstract hydrogen atoms, they're proton acceptors. And so this is the product. This is our halo hydrogen. Now what about this reaction? Let's say if we mix bromine in aqueous or just methanol, pure methanol as a solvent. Predict the major product of this reaction and also propose a mechanism. Now, methanol is going to be the nucleophile, so we're going to put it on the more substituted secondary carbon. Now, notice that I removed the hydrogen because you need to do that. So we're going to get an ether as a product, and the bromine atom is going to be on the primary carbon. So this is going to be the product for the reaction. But now, let's propose a mechanism. So we know the first step is going to be the same. You know how it goes. The double bond attacks the bromine, expels the second one, and the first one attacks the double bond, giving us the cyclic bromineum ion. And then after this step, the solvent, which there's so many solvent molecules out there, is going to attack the secondary carbon, since it has more positive more partial positive charge. And then the bromine is going to be in the front and the methanol molecule will be at the back. It's going to have one lone pair and a positive formal charge. Now we're going to use another methanol molecule to remove the hydrogen that's attached to the oxygen. And so that's how we can write up a mechanism to get the final product. Let's try another example. So what's going to happen if we add bromine but with uh, sodium chloride? We need to realize that chloride is a nucleophile. So it's going to go on a secondary carbon and a bromine atom it's going to go on the primary carbon. Bromine is the electrophile in this problem. 
which typically goes on the last substituted carbon. But let's go ahead and propose a mechanism. So in the first step, the double bond is going to attack the bromine atom, expelling the first or the second bromine atom. And then the first one attacks to form the cyclic bromine ion. Now the last step is pretty straightforward, but we need to realize that the sodium ion is a spiked ion. It doesn't really participate in the reaction. Now the chloride ion is going to attack from the back and it's going to push out the Br. So it's going to attack on a secondary carbon since there's more partial positive charge there. And so this is the product that we're going to get. And so that is it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.